YouTube, it's Dan and Mindfire coming at you from the Vox server, doing a video here by request. We have a couple requests here for a gear progression video for the Enchanter class, so without further ado, let's get out of here. Alright, first things first, you need to know, there are two distinct builds that are recognized by most Enchanter players. One is tank slash survivability, and one is going to be a straight DPS build. Alright? And basically the only difference between the two of those builds are what you're wearing in your primary and secondary. And after that, it's going to be all your AUG choices in your gear that we're going to go here. So let's first of all start with tank slash survivability build, which you're going to always, always, always be using a shield in your secondary slot. In your secondary slot, the AC rules are different. So all the AC provided by your shield gets applied to the the cap AC limit. Now without really getting into a ton of math, what you need to know is the AC number on your inventory screen is actually incorrect. It doesn't actually show what your game AC is or what the NPCs on the other side are looking at and when they turn to strike you. What you need to know is that all the AC in every piece of gear has a cap except for the secondary slot. You always get all of the AC in your secondary slot. 100% of the time, so when you're going for a tank survivability kind of build, the shield is going to be your biggest and most important piece. After that, with the, with the tank survivability build, you want to be going for your range and your neck. Those are going to be your next crucial pieces here, and we'll get into that in a second. And that's mainly because of the focuses. The uh, range gives you a dodge focus and your neck gives you block slash parry. So that's going to be your next two important pieces, and that's really where the tank survivability build differs mostly from the DPS build in terms of gear slots. Now, the other difference is going to be what heroic stats you're going to choose when it comes to uh, what you're looking for for augments. So, if you're going for a tank survivability build, you're going to have you're going to want to look for heroic agility, which is this yellow number here. That's going to improve your AC, your dodge rate, and a lot of other kind of smaller basic things inside there that are really going to make your build what it needs to be. Um, the other crucial stat for a tank survivability build is going to be your heroic strength. So if you and this only applies if you're wearing a shield. Again, without going into the math, heroic strength affects the AC on your shield, and that's pretty much where I'll leave that. I'll put a link to the in the description to the more mathy side of it if that's something that interests you, but that's going to be where you go. And then, so for a tech build, again, age, agility and strength is going to be where you're going to want to put your, your heroic stats, and then you're going to want to make sure that your augs have armor class on them, obviously, if you're going for a tank kind of build. On the flip side, alright, so let's go for, let's take a look at what we got different in the uh, DPS build kind of thing. So, I just switched to my DPS build, and you got a two-hand weapon. Uh, why is the two-hand weapon important for a DPS build? Uh, let's take a look at my two-hander here, and I'll explain. The two-hander has two type 8 augs in it, which you can place, uh, Augs in it for uh, direct damage procs when you get struck. So, oops, that's kind of not really the best place, but so you can see I've got two sympathetic procs for damage base here in this primary, and that's going to be what makes the big difference. You do take a slight drop in survivability in your AC, so when you do get hit, you're going to get hit harder, but with the staff block AAs, you're going to dodge a little bit more, so it kind of helps balance that out a little bit. You don't lose a ton of survivability, but when you do get struck, you get struck harder. So the DPS build, uh, first of all, the, the only difference in your DPS build is going to be your weapon. You're going to be wanting to go for a two-hand weapon instead of a one-handed shield, and you can kind of change the stats that you want in this range slot here a little bit. In terms of augments and secondary stats, or what you're going to want to look for in your non-visible pieces, like your earring, face, stuff like that, uh, you want to look for heroic intelligence and spell damage. And that's really it. Like, 
that's as simple as that build gets. You go for heroic intelligence for mana usage and spell damage for uh, the obvious more sp spell damage on your base spells. So there's that. Now, when it comes to gearing, when you're coming up on levels, from 1 to 85, it's kind of static. There's not a lot of different options here um, to look at in terms of gear. You kind of really get one set. There's like, you know, the mage, necro, channer. That's it. But when you get up into 95, up to 105, there's a bunch of different non-visible pieces that you can take a look at. You'll start to notice that all the non-visible pieces of gear are actually all all. So you can actually pick different templates. So there's always going to be a warrior SK uh, paladin template, a wizard mage neck, uh, wizard mage uh, template, a channer template, and a cleric druid template. And that's really all we need to worry about so as much because the uh, other templates for the hybrids and the melee DPS don't really do much much good. Now. If you're looking at going for a tank build, you want to grab the non-visibles that say recommended for uh, Warrior Paladin SK. You're going to want to grab those because those have higher AC values, higher heroic agility values, and they're going to give you a little bit more of a leeway towards the build that you want. Okay, so if you're going to go for a DPS build, again, you switch that, that focus to looking for Wizard Mage template bit gear, gear or the Enchanter template gear. The Enchanter template gear is a little bit more forgiving on this side because basically the, temp the Enchanter template gear is going to be a hybrid between the Wizard Mage template and the uh, Warrior Paladin template. So basically what it's going to have, it's going to have a higher agility, it's going to have spell damage, it's going to have a little bit of everything so it's going to kind of put you in a hybrid build between a DPS and a tank so you'll be able to switch between both roles. Now, so that kind of puts you in that kind of green hybrid area of between tanking and DPS, which is definitely a good way to go. If you do have the option to get the Channer templates, go for them. However, I wouldn't necessarily pigeonhole yourself and saying, oh, if it's not a Channer template, I don't want it. Now, when it comes to acquiring gear, all right, I'm an Ethermere Western Tainted Karana, or EWK, as referred to by the player base. This is part of the Call of the Forsaken expansion. Oh. Yeah, so this is going to be your main hub here. This is also where the heroic adventures kind of start out. You've probably heard people talking about those and how great those are. These are amazing for people looking to level up and catch up to the level range that we're up to right now to 105. If you're at like level 90 or higher, you should be contemplating doing the daily quests which are available out of here, or you should be contemplating doing some of the quests that are available from like Marla Gaslow or some of the other quest NPCs up the way over there. So the reason that these are important is these give you medals of heroism. I think that's the right one for the... Okay, so basically it's a group currency, okay? You can see all these vendors in front of me right here. You can actually buy full sets of gear for your level. Uh, you can buy mercenary gear. That's mercenary gear. I'm looking at that right now. Sorry. But you can buy full sets of gear. You can look at all the different templates here. You can get augs from here. And, like, the prices themselves are not bad. So for two or three missions, you can buy yourself a piece of gear. This is the 85 merchant, and you can buy like, you know, your full set of visibles here. So essentially, getting gear is way easier than it ever was before, alright? So you can always, always, always grab the gear that you need from here, and it'll be quite easy for you. So you can grab the, you can grab the visibles from this vendor, or if you're looking for more of a kind of a... You know, I don't want, I don't like heroic adventures so much. I don't want to do them. You want to look for kind of an easier path. You can always take a look at the expansion tree and kind of go like that. So, let's say you're 85. Okay, your best place to gear up at 85 is going to be the Ferrot or House of Zul to get that tier one gear. Once you kind of gear up in there, you can kind of go up the tree to tier two, which is the grounds, the well. Then you can go up to tier three all the way up to tier 4, which is going to be Morel's Castle and Sanctisomnium, okay? Now, let's say you're 90, okay? 90, you're starting to look at Argath, Serith, uh, Beast Domain, stuff like that. All of that gear is going to do you really well. 91 is going to be where 
most people gear up at. 91 is the start of where the attunable gear from Reign of Fear comes in. So the Boreal stuff from Shards Landing, you can buy that in the bazaar for really, really cheap and get a full set of Boreal gear for relatively cheap because it's really easy to get. So a lot of people are going to have it in the bazaar there for you. Um, Non-visibles tend to go in the bazaar quite cheaply as well, so you can kind of selectively pick and choose. But I always recommend that people go the heroic adventure route because you're going to level up ridiculously fast. You're going to get uh, currency to get logs, gear, and it's actually really easy in current EQ to get yourself a nice set of gear. Now, the big things to take note of for enchanters mainly is going to be your focuses here. So, for focuses, you want to take a look at your wrists, which is chromatic damage, legs, which is uh, cast time in cast speed and your robe. So these are your three crucial boot visibles to have in your current focus. Your robe gives you a clicky and a ruined cast time reduction. In terms of non-visibles, of course I always mention the primary, secondary, range, neck, and your back for buff focuses. All the rest of the stuff is kind of, kind of fluff. Shoulders are a nice one to have, but unless you're kind of taking a lot of damage, it's not really a necessity, so to speak. So, there you have it. That's the main essential points of where to gear up and, and what gear slots are important. As always, I am available for questions at any time. Just type uh, dot, uh, colon tell dot box dot pres dot uh, fuck, excuse me. Send me a tell in EQ, uh, colon tell dot box dot dandin, or you can send me an in game email, just follow the same kind of syntax, just change my server to box and my name to dandin. Or you can send me a message on the forums here or on YouTube, and you can always check us out here at uh, Twitch. I made a live streaming channel where I live stream group content, raids, a little bit of everything. And you can check me out there at twitch.tv slash dandineq. Alright guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.